Hey everyone, so I'm going to show you how to do um, the withdrawal of medication from a vial and then how to do a subcutaneous uh, injection. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you select the correct syringe and needle size for the vaccination that you are going to give. Um, if, and so that would then include making sure that you know the um, route that you're going to give it. So if you're giving subcutaneous, you're going to use one needle size. If you're giving uh, intramuscular, then you're going to use another. If it is intradermal, then it'll be a different one. So for this injection, we are going to use subcutaneous. And you can see that we have various needle sizes here. This is a tuberculin syringe used for intradermal injections. This is a 25 gauge, 5 8 inch long um, syringe or needle attached to a 3 cc syringe. So we're going to use this one for our subcutaneous injection. Um, I don't know if you can see, there might be a little bit of a glare on there, um, but this is the uh, appropriate needle size for most sub-Q injections. Subcutaneous, again, goes into the fatty tissue, not to the muscle. This is an insulin syringe. Insulin goes into subcutaneous tissue as well. So that needle size um, is 5 16 This is a one milliliter syringe. Um, and so the whole entire thing is broken down into 100 units. So it holds one milliliter of insulin, but it's broken down into units. That's how you can tell the difference between um, tuberculin and uh, insulin syringes. And then the last syringe we have is also a three mil or three cc syringe, but the needle on it is quite a bit bigger. This is used for intramuscular injections. The needle is a one inch needle. Um, so intramuscular injections usually use one to one and a half inch, sometimes even up to two inch needles if um, necessary. And so you can see that this is a 21 gauge um, by one inch long needle. So I'm gonna move these to the side and take out my sub-Q needle. So a couple of things to note while I am doing this is that if you are ever withdrawing medication from an ampule, you are going to want to um, make sure that you use a needle called a filter needle. And certain medications are going to require you to change out the needle that you are going to use to withdraw from the um, vial with. So um, MMRs are one of them, and sometimes there are other medications that will require you to change out this needle with a fresh needle before you inject into the patient. So I have my syringe out and I'm gonna leave it capped for just a moment. I'm gonna prep my vial and take this lid off. And the first thing you're gonna do is take an alcohol prep pad and you see the rubber dam in there. We wanna start there, wipe counterclockwise from the rubber dam out once around the inside. For this injection, I'm going to inject a half a milliliter. And so what you wanna do is um, pull back equal amounts of air and push it into the vial for the amount of solution that you're going to withdraw from the vial. Now, it's a good idea to always pull back a little extra um, so that if you have air bubbles, you can push out and not be underdosed in your vial. So since I wanted to, I know I, that I need to um, have a half a mil at the end after I'm done flicking out air bubbles, I'm gonna go ahead and pull back the plunger to about a mil. So when you're looking at this plunger, the top of the um, black line, the top of the plunger, which is actually the bottom of the plunger if you're looking at the plunger. Um, so the, this uh, top black line or the bottom of the plunger, if you're looking at the needle this way, let me flip that back around. So the top back line is where you wanna um, take your measurement from. So I'm gonna pull back to one-ish. And that's the amount of air I'm gonna pull in, push into the vial. You put your needle into the rubber dam, flip the vial upside down, and very carefully push the air in. Now, if you let go of that plunger, the air that you just pushed in should start to move the plunger down automatically for you. And when it stops, you can very gently withdraw fluid into your plunger. The slower you go, 
the less air you're going to push uh, and pull into your vial. So I'm going to pull back down. Okay, so when you're done, you want to lift your vial off the needle so that you are away from your um, needle and don't poke yourself. And then here's the only time it's ever safe to recap a needle. I know that this needle is clean, so to recap it, don't ever pick the cap up and try to stick it back on there. The way to safely recap this clean needle is to, I'm gonna turn this sideways, is it easier if you see sideways? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn this sideways, is to push the needle in here, scoop it up, pick it up, then push it down and click it. So now that needle is on there, or the cap is on there tightly again, I like to twist the needle, like that one was pretty loose, so I like to twist it um, so that it's good and tight on there, uh, and that way my needle doesn't go flying off when I start to flick out the bubbles. Now I don't know if you can see, but there's a pretty large air bubble in there. Do you want to bring it closer? I got it. So there's a pretty uh, large air bubble in here, and so what you want to do is make sure that you flick these so that all the air bubbles go up to the top. And air bubbles really like to live along that plunger down there at the bottom. And so you wanna make sure you get all the big ones out and as many of the little ones out as you can. So you need to flick it pretty good. I think I've got, I think I've got pretty good there. And then you can kind of see the liquid running out of the needle inside the cap there. I'm pushing all the extra air out. And then I'm gonna push up to, oh, I put on another air bubble. I'm gonna push up to my desired dose, which was half a mil. So by drawing back that extra fluid, it gave me the ability to flick those air bubbles up to the top and then have a little extra medication in there so that I could push air out of the top of the um, syringe if I had a little extra air in there and still have the correct amount of medication that I desire to inject. All right, so now my injection is ready to be delivered. Again, if this was a, um, a medication that required the needle to be changed, then I would just take this um, needle off and change it out with a fresh needle. Um, otherwise, uh, if it was one that was drawn, withdrawn from an ampule, I would take the filter needle off and put a fresh needle on before injecting in the patient. Now, before I go inject the patient, I wanna um, to um, get this put away. And so the thing with um, the vials is to again, clean it, and then it's ready to be stored. Now that has to be cleaned before and after use um, every time it's withdrawn. If it's a multi-dose vial, if it's a single dose vial, then it's just discarded. Okay, so we're gonna pause you for a moment while we reset the camera and then we'll do the injection. Okay, so to give the patient the subcutaneous injection, we have all of our supplies prepared. We have alcohol pads, band-aids, that I didn't drop on the floor, and our medication. Um, so we are going to first locate the area that we're going to get the injection on the patient's arm. And uh, on this patient, we are doing the arm, uh, the injection on the subcutaneous tissue on the back of the arm. So we wanna go and find the tissue on the back of the arm. I like to pinch the subcutaneous ish, uh, tissue and do it gently. Um, you don't need to like, you know, hurt them any more than we are with the injection. So I like to pinch the area. You wanna start in the center with the alcohol swab and wipe counterclockwise <clears throat> with the syringe. Um, you wanna make sure that your bevel is up. So I don't know if you can see the bevel on that um, syringe, but you want to make sure that the bevel is up. And then with subcutaneous injections, you go at a 45 degree angle. So if this is 90, which is perpendicular to her, the patient's arm, you would go about half of that, which is 90. So with the bevel up, you're going to go 90 degrees. Ready? One, two, three. And you want to stick very quickly 
let go. Now some places will tell you to aspirate, some places will not. But then you want to push the medication into the patient's arm, withdraw, and I'm going to drop that straight into the sharps container. Surprisingly, my patient, who is normally a bleeder, is doing remarkably well in the bleeding department today. Wow. I know. Look at you, rock star. Last time I bled a lot, so. But we are going to put a Band-Aid over her anyway. We're going to bandage the patient. And then here's where you would provide any um, patient education regarding the type of uh, medication that they have, any literature um, that the patient may be receiving uh, regarding medication, um, adverse effects or anything that they would need to be on the lookout for, um, especially if it's immunizations that they received or anything like that. So um, that's pretty much the process. It takes longer to prepare the vaccination um, than it does to actually complete the vaccination and then once you're done you just clean up your mess and um, I think that's it. If you have any questions let me know.